Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here at Palais Arts, and I am standing with Monique Sarkeesian in front of her beautiful painting, dimensional painting, I might add. And Monique is going to tell us a little something about it. Monique? Thank you, Carol. Um, this is a new series for me. It's called Daughters of Heaven. And um, this is the second one in the series. You'll see the first one in the show that I just brought. But um, I've been working for years about identity, as pri primarily about women's identity mm -hmm. and um, bringing um, positive images to women and speaking into their identities. So it took me years to figure out how to do that. And, you know, but it's always been a primary um, question in my mind of how to do that. And especially the times that we live in now, where there are just so many derogatory uh, messages given to women. I mean, it just seems to be getting worse. <laughs> and um, so I, so this piece speaks into that. It's about who we were created to be by God and about um, what we carry that is very significant and um, and it's supposed to have a radiance and a glory to it, reflecting the glory of heaven. So that's what um, she, what I tried to portray here. This is based on a person that I know, and um, I just found her to be very inspirational. And the first piece is also based on her likeness. But um, I brought together different elements. It's hard to see in the spring, but this is all wood. The base is wood with oil paint applied, but then I cut out other painted pieces of wood and jigsaw them and, you know, fit them together. So it has multiple layers, like Carol said. And um, so I call it like a wood mosaic. Mm -hmm. And it also has references to Kintsugi, the Japanese art of brokenness, where um, uh, beloved pottery, which was precious to them, would break, and instead of throwing it away like we do in Western culture, considering it to not have any value anymore, um, it becomes more valuable because the pieces get put back together lovingly and joined with gold. So it speaks to the um, our journey, even if we encounter brokenness or trauma or things like that, that we aren't disqualified. We are, are become more valuable if we're able to steward that and to um, walk forward with purpose. So, and that's actually what has happened throughout my life many times where I've had to go through great traumas, but instead um, the Lord used that to bring redemption. And so that's why that there are gold, trails of gold connecting the pieces. And so um, this piece has, you know, her image and what, who she is, uh, her essence. And there are elements added on here, like fruit trees and flowers and another, you know, another different kind of flower up here. And this scene actually was taken from another painting that I had of boats um, that I did, you know, for a different purpose. And then I cut that out and that actually makes up part of her <laughs> piece. So all these elements came together. It took me a long time to fit them all together. But um, it, if you read it like a story, you can see all these elements of all the things she's been through, positive and negative, have come forward. And, and what her real essence is, isn't dictated by traumas or by difficulties, but it's really the radiance. It's really who she was created to be, and that's why there are these still waters inside of her. And I added, I had this inspiration to put a baby in here. Yes. So there's this baby that this piece of what actually was a still life painting that I had done with, with plums from my plum tree, and they were all different colors. And I said, yeah, that'd be really perfect for a baby. So I took a, a jigsaw and cut out that shape and placed that in here. So there are references from this abstract painting that look like organs and a placenta and things <laughs> like that. So the longer you look at it, the more dimensions that you see. So um, I hope that was. Oh, that was a great explanation. <laughs> and I loved how you said about that because I was going to ask you um, about this almost feels like a room. So we have a room, we have a landscape, we have the the um, decorations here. We see the little tufts of hair coming out. I mean, the amount of detail. Um, how do you get to what details you're going to include and not include? 
Um, with me, my work is about um, essences. I'm I used to try to paint every detail, but I find that with my work that that doesn't suit it so well. I prefer to um, be, be bold and to be vibrant and keep that as the focus. And so the details that I include wind up being um, not everything is hyperstated, you know, it's more of a, a perception so that I, I find, I personally find that a that sometimes art goes too hyper realist and if it gives your amazing brain too much information then the brain after 30 seconds says oh i know what this is all about and wants, wants to go play something else and i don't i don't want work like that i want it to keep you engaged i want it to be something that somebody could say i could live with this yeah you know i could look at this every day and get something different from it and even i get something different from it even though I, it came from my hands as a product and I did different things with it, I still find different things. So that's, um, so, you know, like to me, hair hair has always been really important to me for women, images of women. Mm -hmm. I just find it to be, um, it, it says a lot about them and it relates to the idea of heavenly glory and, and the fact that um, the brown skinned women, brown and black skinned women often don't get um, to be their true self and be able to have their beauty as they really are um, displayed and honored. Well, and even um, on, on in photographs, yeah. our cameras aren't even designed to cap, like they're biased towards lighter skin. And, that, and they're that, biased towards straight, dark hair. Yeah, and like, so the idea that you're painting a portrait that captures the essence of who someone truly is when even our cameras, which we consider the perfect capture, cannot, is really beautiful. Thank you. Um, well, a camera really can only pick up a certain amount of color. I agree. And your eye and brain are far more sophisticated yes. than that, as, as good as cameras are. Yes. And they've gotten so much better. But that's the beauty of And that's also why I choose this medium. Yeah. And you can see that I love color. So a lot of people will, a lot of other artists will approach color in a, in a more representational way. Mm -hmm. But for me, there's always jumping off points of what I perceive in there and what, you know, like what the Holy Spirit will tell me in there. And that's what I'll go for. And that's what I feel is being radiated. And I feel like that's really what gives people, you know, we, there are dimensions in the work, but there are more dimensions in the work. And I want, I love when people who look at it get that. Yeah. So um, anyway, so back to, you know, so I, I love black hair. I love all kinds of hair. I'm always people watching. Mm -hmm. And so when I can paint a person and really get to observe them, like I just think that's awesome. So, you know, one of the things I loved was about that natural flow. Like yeah. my hair can't do. So I just find that amazing. And um, so, yeah, I, I think that all, all, all peoples are so beautiful, especially in their, um, who they were created to be, it reflecting their ethnicity, I find is really beautiful. I, I actually think it's a shame, like the American t-shirt blue jeans model, because it really doesn't look good on hardly anybody. And when I see like, Indian women in their native dress. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. this woman that I painted, I was invited to her house and she's Ethiopian. And they, they she was with these other women. They were all dressed in these native, in these Ethiopian traditional dress and they had these gold things in their hair. And I just was like, yay! Because <laughs> I could stare, I could, you know, observe and stare yeah. at them and just be like, oh, this is fabulous. So, um, and that's the thing when you, I mean, I think, as Americans, we're lucky because we get to travel to different places and we get to have a lot of different people come in. And to say that anything should be stereotyped into this little box when the variety is, is the so point. rich the yeah, variety and is so the point. wonderful. But I'm also going to get back to the painting, too, yeah. and talk because you have to talk to people about your color. Your color is always glowing and bold and, uh, and radiant. And so how do you think about color when you're doing your piece? Because it looks like the thing that I'd recognize, but it doesn't. If, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, I do. Uh, um, 
I I see more colors and things than other people see, apparently. <laughs> you know, because to me, it's like this is how I see a lot of things, and then people will say, "Well, oh, I don't see it that way." So, like, it's kind of like hard for me to understand how other people see in that way. But I don't. Um, I again, it's the the reflection of what's really there yeah. behind. It. It's the thing that, you know, like if I paint in partnership, in divine partnership. So I try to partner with the Holy Spirit with whatever I do. And I'm sorry if that sounds flaky to anybody. It's just how I do it. Um, <laughs> and um, and so, well, you know, he'll say stuff like, oh, well, you know, red here. And I'll be like, really? And I'll be like, okay, fine. And then we'll go together and, and find that right color. That one that needs to be portrayed. So, and a lot of times, even when I'm working representational, say I'm painting a still life or a landscape, and it might look a certain way. Like I can match that color, but it just doesn't seem right. And and there are times you you probably find this, Carol. Yeah. That you know you paint something of what it looks like, but it's not the right color. It's one of the hardest things to teach new students, yes. especially as they're dealing with painting. That these are colors, and if you're just trying to match something in a photograph or even in a still life that you're seeing, you're not going to get the vibrancy that you want where you are going to go and have to react to the world of the painting. This painting, as you say, tells you things, just as for you, God tells you things yeah. and you are in this constant action reaction with all this going on yeah no i think that's a yeah. beautiful statement in about that, painting I in do that too. sense it's it's symbolic yeah right yes. so it's symbolic like your dreams are symbolic yeah which is also god's language so so um there are starting points that you might really love, the color that might be the inspire, inspiration that draws you in. But then on top of it, like, is there anything else that you can do for that? Like, what brings out that emotion in you? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, you know, you do it, but we the man-made colors that come out of the tube or packet or whatever you have, um, you know, can only take you so far. Mm -hmm. So... You know, if it doesn't take you where it needs to go, and, and actually you do have to kind of get into your subject mm -hmm. to be able to even access that point. And then at that point, like, what is the conversation that you're having with the artwork while you're doing it? Exactly. And then you have a conversation with your materials and your hands also. So as you're having those conversations, you know, what... What what does it sound like? What 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 does it feel like? What does it look like? What do I have to activate? What do I have to make quieter? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And and everything can't be shouting. I had a favorite instructor in, in art school, um, Professor Anlicker, and he would say, you know, you can't go to an opera and have all the everyone on stage shouting at this high level, this <laughs> yeah. high pitch, because you can't hear anything. So something has to be quiet. And for me. Sometimes the volume is so high up somewhere that I'll have to be like, okay, what, what needs to, you know, be more subtle so that the other ones can be heard. Well, not only that, because you have this more blended and more subtle, it just pushes the figure even more to us yeah. and to the direction that she's facing and what she's seeing ahead and that something happened behind, but what it, you're seeing ahead. So it's beautiful symbology that you're using, which is the other, I think, important thing about your artwork. I think most people would recognize Monique by the color and by the symbology. So please come to Paddling Arts from now to November 20th to see not just this, but two other of Monique's beautiful works. Thanks, Monique.